In this video, I'm going to cover a couple different essential things you should know before you start diving further into Discord JS development. The very first thing is that most common topics that you're going to want to learn about can be covered within the official Discord JS guide. You can head over to discordjs.guide or you can click on the link in the description and here you have a bunch of different tutorials that are going to teach you basic concepts. For example, here we have interaction handling for slash commands, buttons, select menus, and so on. And then here we have popular topics. So you can learn about embeds, reactions, collectors, and many more. The next is utilizing the official Discord JS documentation. And I do have a complete tutorial on how to actually do this. That'll be linked down in the description. So if you ever have a problem when developing your bots, I suggest one of two things. The first thing I would do is look into the official documentation to see if you can find a quick answer there. The second option is to ask in the official Warnoff Keys Discord server, which you can find a link to in the description and in the pinned comment. There are around 10,000 users in here and people are frequently asking questions and getting help. Now the next two things I'm gonna show you are intents and partials. And so I'm gonna jump into my code editor. Here I have a very basic hello world type program where I'm simply just replying to Pong whenever the word ping is sent in the message. Now intents are things you can specify right here. And this is basically telling Discord what information you want to be sent to your bot. So for example, for us to listen to the content within a message, we need the message content intent. Now I'm gonna simply react to this message right here. So here I can say const reply equals await message.reply. So this function needs to become asynchronous. And now I can say reply.react passing in a string where I can now use windows key colon, which opens up this menu here. And I can then add in a check mark right here. And now I want to log every new reaction that happens. So underneath my message create listener, I can now say client.on message reaction add. And then here we're going to gain access to our reaction. I can then add in a console log to print this to the console. Saving this will now restart the bot. If I head back into Discord, I can now send the message ping. And this now adds a reaction right here, but you might notice that nothing was actually logged to the console. And even if I click on this, we're not gonna get anything in the console, even though we are listening for the message reaction add event. That's because we're not telling Discord that we actually want to receive information about reactions. So to do that, we can add in a new intent. So gateway intent bits dot guild message reactions. I can go ahead and save this, the bot restarts. And now going back into Discord, I can send the word ping again. And we now get a reaction right here, but more importantly, we have a message in our console that has information about this reaction. It currently says count is one. So if I react to this, it's now gonna fire another event. And here we see count is now two. So if something isn't working correctly in your bot, such as an event isn't being fired, most likely you didn't tell Discord what intents you want. So therefore it's not gonna send you that information. And it's important that you only specify the intents that you're actually going to use because it could be a waste of bandwidth and memory if you're going to request a bunch of different intents when you're not actually using them at all. So now the bot has restarted. And if I go back into Discord, I can now add in reactions here and we don't see anything being logged to the console. That's because our bot doesn't know about these messages right here because they haven't been cached yet through Discord JS. In order to fix this, we can add in something known as a partial. So to do that, we can add it into our clients right here. So I can say partials is an array. And we also have to import partials with a capital P from Discord JS. So here I can add in partials. So in order to receive information about uncached reactions, we have to specify two different partials. The first one will be partials.message. The second one is going to be partials.reaction. I can go ahead and save this. And going back into Discord, I can now click on the reaction. And now we get our console log right here, but it says the count is null, which isn't correct. And that's because a partial isn't a full Discord JS object, which is gonna have a bunch of information attached to it, such as the details like count. A partial is what it sounds like, a partial piece of information. So in this case, if we scroll up, we might get access to some IDs right here, but we're not gonna have a bunch of information. One way to fix this is to first see if a reaction is going to be a partial reaction, therefore only having a few pieces of information and not the whole picture. To check this, instead of logging just reaction, I'm going to log reaction.partial. I can now save this and going back into Discord, I can now react again. And here we see Boolean true. So with that said, I can basically wrap this entire thing inside of an if statement to say if reaction partial, if so, I'm now going to say await reaction dot fetch. And of course, because we're using await, this function now must become asynchronous. And then after this, I can now add in a console log to print out the reaction. I can now save this. I can go into Discord. I can now click on this. And we now see count is two because we're now fetching all the necessary information based off of the ID that was provided because again, a partial is going to be something where you only have a partial piece of information, such as just the ID. And then with that ID, the fetch method right here is then going to fetch the rest of it through the Discord API. Now, of course, more information on intents as well as partials can be found in a link in the description down below. 
there's only a couple more things I want to show you. The next up is going to be collections, which are basically just an extension of the JavaScript map, but they have some additional functionality. So for example, you have things like find, filter, map, etc. So if you're familiar with JavaScript maps, then you're going to be familiar with collections. And a link to the collection documentation as well as the map documentation for JavaScript can be found in the description as well. One last thing I want to show you is going to be the difference between users and members. And a user here has a bunch of pieces of information such as the avatar URL as a method. We have access to an avatar object here we have access to a boolean if they're a bot and of course we have access to an id so basically this user object represents a discord user and every user that you interact with with your bot is going to have access to this user object but another type of object you might see is going to be guild member and this is basically an extension of the user object we're going to have a lot of similar pieces of information such as the avatar url and the avatar the id and so on but a guild member as the name implies is going to have guild specific things in it for example we can kick them we can ban them, we can set their nickname, and if we scroll down, we can even gain access to their nickname, and there's a few more things here as well. So anything that has to do with roles or nicknames or guild-specific features for that specific user are going to be stored inside of a guild member object. I'm sure that all of these fundamentals are going to help you as you continue to move forward and learn more about Discord bot development. And if you ever need any help, feel free to ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord server, a link we found down below in the description and the pinned comment.